Mr. Oldner, welcome to the channel. You know, I often get two questions and comments. Very, very common. First of all, Richard, what is the most powerful combination you've ever dyno tested? And that's easy. For me, it's one of the Big Bang, the 6 liter Gen 4 motor that made 1,540 horsepower. Now, I've had other combinations that we could have turned the boost up on. It made a lot more power. That big blocks with twin turbos and all that stuff. But we just never did. So that's the most powerful. But interestingly enough, one of the very, very common questions that I get, in fact, I get it as often as I get what's the most powerful, that's what is the least powerful V8 you've ever tested, which one really didn't make any power. And so I decided I'm going to make a video exactly on that subject. And here it is, the three least powerful V8s I've ever tested. We're starting off our lowest V8 that Richard's ever tested with the most powerful of the three lowest V8s that Richard ever tested. This particular one was a Ford. We're also going to show you a Chevy and a Dodge. In case people are asking, as I said all the time, about which one is, makes the least amount of power, this one was a 5-liter Ford, so an EFI 5-liter, you know, an OG one. It was modified in terms of the short block because we put pistons in it, forged pistons in it, to allow us to give us enough piston to valve clearance to run, at least with inline heads, to run bigger and bigger camshafts, which we would eventually do. We'd also run different cylinder heads and things like we will with the others to improve the power output. But to get things started, naturally we wanted to start off as a basically stock baseline other than the piston change. So we equipped it with the factory iron E7TE heads. We equipped it with, and, and it had valve springs in it because we would be putting a camshaft in with the stock head before we would be doing other upgrades because we did them in uh, succession. We also did intakes and various other things. But we stand, we had the stock head, the stock 5HO stick camshaft, which is pretty healthy for a stock camshaft. We had the stock HO upper and lower intake and stock HO throttle body on it. We did not run the factory mass air because we ran an aftermarket ECU. We put shorty headers and a dual exhaust, which add very little compared to the factory exhaust manifolds because I've tested that many, many times. So run in this trim, and this basically stock trim with all the stock components on the top, it produced 252 horsepower out at 5,100 RPM and 306.6 foot-pounds of torque. So it actually did fairly well. Like I said, that factory camshaft is actually a little bit bigger than the other cams that we, the stock cams that we would run in both the Chevy or the Dodge, but <laughs> we're just picking stock ones. Had we run a 289 or a 260 or a 221 or even one of the um, Smog 255s, or even a, an earlier version of this 5 liter, like the 157 horsepower version, and not the 225 horsepower version. Obviously, the power would be a lot less. I just haven't run one of those yet, so that's the only reason we're not seeing that. But here's what happened after we modified this version, when we did what we do, did on all of them, really. We did heads cam and intake manifold and push the power up near 400 horsepower in this case. It wanted to make power at a much higher engine speed. But it made 394 horsepower at 6200 RPM. Peak torque check-in, see we kind of had a dual torque there. 379.9 foot-pounds of torque. We added a set of RHS CNC ported heads. We added the Comp Extreme Energy 274 cam that I put on everything. And then we ran an extrude hone ported Holly Systemax intake manifold. So kept the bottom end stock, put a camshaft in it, heads, intake manifold to replace the factory stuff, and long tube headers. These were inch and 5 eighths long tube headers. And obviously we picked up quite a bit of power. So now let's check and see what happened with the Chevy and the Dodge. Motor number two was a small block Chevy, and like the Ford, it actually had an upgraded piston in it, um, or it was rebuilt. We ran a flat top piston with valve reliefs because we knew we were going to be stepping up to some fairly big camshafts on this combination, but we wanted to start out with something that was the lowest power output possible <laughs> with our combination. Now, this would be even lower had we started out with a factory dish piston in the small block Chevy, but as I said, we had a flat top piston, but otherwise we equipped it with basically all of the stock stuff. So we equipped it with stock exhaust manifolds, um, a dual exhaust. We did have a very small camshaft in it. It was a 383 401 lift, so <laughs> right near 400 lift, 194 202 at 50 and 112 degree lobe separation. It was a flat tap of cam. Basically, it was a cam, a replacement cam that I just went to the auto parts store and said this this was like 180 horsepower 
350 replacement camshaft. And then we also ran it with a two barrel intake manifold, a 2G Rochester carburetor, yeah, and a, and a distributor. And we ran this thing, um, first without an air cleaner on it with just the open carburetor. And then actually putting the air cleaner lid on it actually improved the power output a little bit because we kind of had a radius entry going. And we'll see on the uh, Dodge that kind of the reverse happened. But run a run on the engine dyno with the uh, two barrel induction system, the 882 heads, a small cam, stock exhaust manifolds. R350 produced a whopping 229 horsepower, 228.9. And again, as we see, it produced a lot more torque than horsepower, 350 foot-pounds. In fact, it might have gone a little bit over 350 foot-pounds. We started the load in down at 23, 4, 5, uh, 22, 2300 RPM. And this thing wanted to make peak power at 45 or 4600 RPM. So, but here's what happened eventually as we upgraded this thing, because we went step by step. We tried a bunch of different combinations. We put small cams in it. We put some ported stock heads. We put four barrel intake manifolds on, just like we did, would do later on with the Dodge. But we went step by step on all kinds of things. And we eventually put um, a really good combination together. We put we replaced the 882 heads, the big chamber, not flowing very much 882 heads, with a really good set of heads for this combination. It was a set of Airflow Research 195 eliminator heads, and these were the um, competition ported versions, so they were the double throwdown versions. Um, they had a beehive spring and uh, you know all kinds of stuff. We had roller rockers on this thing. We had an RPM air gap that... And when we also had a uh, very small half inch spacer on top of it, we ran both a 750 and an 850 carburetor and they both made within a couple of numbers each other. These are the numbers I'm going to show you are actually with the 850. We had inch and three quarter headers. We had an MSD. We had a pretty good sized camshaft in it and this was the extreme energy 294 and we stepped up from the flat tappet camshaft to a hydraulic roller profile so we had a hydraulic roller in this and again i'll go ahead and put the specs up here but it was a pretty good sized camshaft so we had more compression because the not only did the heads flow a ton more than the ad2s the airflow research heads also had a smaller chamber they measured 62 or 63 cc's uh, so more compression, more airflow, much bigger camshaft, much better intake manifold, obviously, than the factory two barrel, bigger carburetor. <laughs> we had the, we had the headers on it instead of the stock exhaust manifolds. And here's what happened when we ran all of that stuff together. You could see we we're up over 500 horsepower. So it was quite a bit, 523 horsepower. Torque checked in at 481, and we had to do a lot of tuning on this combination, both in terms of jetting uh, with the carburetor, which I said was an 850, and also timing and stuff. So, but it took a little while to get here when a lot of successive steps, but you can see from, from humble beginnings come lots of great things if you apply the right parts, even to the, just your basic, you know, this kind of short block. So, going order of displacement, we finish off with our largest combination. This was a 360 Dodge motor, but it made, obviously, very little power. In fact, it had the lowest of all three of them, despite the fact that it was the biggest of the three. So, in our Ford and Chevy Dodge, <laughs> the Dodge came up the low man on the totem pole in this instance, only because I haven't tested other combinations. But on the 360, this was a motor that I pulled out of my Dodge Tradesman van, it was a two barrel 360 and we ran on the engine dyno with cast, uh, the factory exhaust manifolds, the factory exhaust, well, the exhaust that I had on the van. Before we did a bunch of upgrades to it, it had a two barrel intake manifold and a two barrel, you know, uh, two barrel carburetor. We ran it with the air cleaner. And in this case, unlike the Chevy, when we took the air cleaner lid off, it actually made more power. Whereas when we put the air cleaner lid on the two barrel, on the 2G, on the small block Chevy, it actually picked up power because of the radius entry. So this was interesting. Maybe the filter <laughs> was really clogged or something. But the lowest power output Dodge motor that I ran, and I haven't run a, you know, a similar kind of 318, which would probably could make less power. But on this 360, it produced on the engine dyno 224.5 horsepower power at a whopping 4,500 RPM tells you what they're interested in in terms of power output on these things. They're interested in low speed torque and this thing did make a lot more torque than horsepower which we've 
you know, become used to on some of these very low horsepower V8 applications, it made 338 foot pounds of torque. So, you know, for a Dodge van or a big truck, you want a bunch of low speed power. And really, most guys are not revving these things out. I know that I wasn't racing the van around. I was happy just driving it around. But it worked a lot better after we did a bunch of modifications to it because we did them all one at a time. And you can take a look. That video is already up where I go step by step. We put headers on it. We put a four barrel intake manifold and carburetor on it. We put a quadrajet on it. And then we installed uh, different ported heads and Edelbrock stuff and different intake manifolds um, and then uh, bigger camshafts and stuff. So we ended up, you know, getting up to a fairly high power output. I actually ran this thing in the car with a small cam and and uh, four barrel intake manifold, four barrel induction system and headers on it. And when we also I took the factory um, crank driven water pump up and put an electric uh, fan on it and after we did that the thing was nice to drive around it had plenty of power but let's take a look and see what it had uh, when we ran it with its most powerful combination that was with a an extreme energy 268 camshaft let's take a look at our description here so we had an rpm air gap intake manifold and a demon carburetor we had long tube headers and a three inch exhaust run the way that we do on the dyno. We installed the Extreme Energy 268 cam and I'll go ahead and put the cam specs up here for you so that you can see it. There was a little bit of a trade compared to the smaller cam. So if you're more interested in low speed torque, as always, you get the smaller RV-ish kind of cam. We had, in this case, ported, mildly ported Edelbrock heads, although they didn't do much better than the um, factory iron heads, especially in ported form. Um, the Edelbrocks, you need a lot more combination in this and you need some actually some fairly serious work done to the Edelbrocks to get them to flow more and make more power. Dulcich obviously is the man for that kind of stuff. Um, we ran the timing at 34 degrees. We had um, actually had roller rockers on it in this case as well. And here's what happened in terms of power. It pushed power up to 387 horsepower. And the nice thing is we improved the torque everywhere. We had a peak of 434 foot pounds owing to the fact that this is a pretty good sized displacement motor. But notice that we had even more torque down at 2500, <laughs> excuse me, compared to the stock stuff. So this whole combination worked fairly well. Although, like I said, when I ran it around, we took the 268 cam out of the van and we put a much smaller cam in, more of an RV style cam, and then it drove around and worked great. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from this video on the least powerful V8 combinations I've ever tested? Now, I've tested a lot of other combinations that made less power than this. We can obviously put on smaller motors, a stock V16 Honda, some of the V6 and some of the other four-cylinder stuff that I tested. They obviously made less power. But in terms of V8, you know, the American V8s, these are the least powerful combinations I've ever tested. There are lower power versions of that, and maybe later on I'll be testing those so I can bring you an updated video on the even even lower, lowest power combinations I've ever tested. But here's the other takeaway from this. Although we started at a very low power output on all of these because we saddled them with stock cylinder heads, low compression, very mild cam timing. And in the case of the Chevy and the Dodge, a two barrel induction system, all which tend to limit power production. But the thing is, the other part of this video, the part that's very important is, although we were starting out at the lowest power output of all of these V8s, we ended up making really good power because honestly, there was nowhere else to go but up from all of these baseline combinations. So add the right cylinder heads, add the right camshaft, right induction system, and all of a sudden, you look like a hero. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.